I thought I'd talk a little bit about effective flanger. We've already talked about this, but uh, I wanted to make another video so you could find this more easily. When you have a slab and uh, beam system like this, the slab can act with the beam to form a T-beam. And in this bottom example, since the beams are spaced farther apart, this uh, flange becomes much wider. And so the question becomes, how much of the slab can you count as the flange of your T-beam? And this is going to be the effective flange width. And it depends on three things. First of all, there's the tributary width which is uh, the center to center length. So here's the center line uh, between two adjacent beams and the center line between two adjacent beams. And that makes this distance here, the tributary width for that beam. And that would be a logical uh, dimension to be the effective flange length. And so when you space the beams farther apart, uh, you get a larger effective flange length. That's tributary width. It sort of seems that there must be some limit to this. You can't go halfway to the next beam if that length gets really, really long. And intuitively, it seems it should be a function of how thick the flange is, and that's true. The second measure of effective flange length is the length of these overhanging ears are what I'm calling them. You can take eight times the thickness of the flange as the part of the flange that participates as your T-beam. And so if you add it all up, you have 16 flange thicknesses, eight on each side, and the width of the beam to add up to your total B effective. That's the second uh, definition of effective flange width based on the flange thickness. So first was the tributary width. Second was a multiple of the flange thicknesses for your ears. Finally, and this is a little more difficult to understand, is the length of the beam. And so here, let's say, is your T-beam, let's draw it here, so something like this. And so that T-beam will look like this. There we go. So this T-beam has a span length of L. And the width of the flange that participates, this width of the flange is L over four. So one fourth of the span length. And you have these three expressions for effective flange length, the tributary width, the flange width based on flange thickness, and the flange width based on the span length. And what you do is you take the least of these three, and that will be your effective flange width. Finally, what if you have uh, the spandrel beam at the end, and you have the edge of your, the flange of your T beam only on one side. And so here we have B effective for this case, um, the expressions change slightly. Of course, you still have the tributary with center line to center line, but there's only a center line on one side. The difference uh, for the flange thickness, first of all, there's only one ear, but this effective flange width, in this case, um, this overhanging the length of that, what I'm calling the ear, so you have just one ear on one side, Instead of eight flange thicknesses, there's only six flange thicknesses. And uh, for this case, um, the span length 
instead of let me copy this. Um, so in this case, uh, instead of taking L over four, it's much, you would think half of that, so L over eight, but instead you get uh, L over 12. And again, in all cases, you take the least of these three. That's how you calculate effective flange width to determine how much of the slab participates as the flange in your TV.